good morning. It, we were just about to go up to the allotment to film the plot tour for tomorrow when we got the call to say that we could pick up the chickens. So that, she's ignoring me. That is what we're doing in the car now. We are driving to, I don't actually know where we're going, but it's down past Croydon somewhere um, to pick up some girls. Yeah. So we arrived at the chicken breeders and everything was marvellous and absolutely beautiful. All the chickens were gorgeous, but it was at her house and in her garden. So I didn't want to film. So you'll be thrilled to know that I have recreated the scene with pinpoint accuracy just for you. I've got chickens. They are just behind me in that box. They're gorgeous. <laughs> they are um, 11 and a half weeks old. So we need to uh, pick up some grower pellets. So obviously when they're really small, they eat mash, like, like mashed up kind of pellets. And then they are on the um, grower pellets up until the point when they're kind of ready to start laying and then they go on to layer pellets. But we've only got layer pellets at home, obviously because we had chickens that were well past the grower stage. So we are gonna stop by Chapman's on our way home. I don't know if you remember Chapman's, it's the garden center that, well, you've been with us a couple of times already. So we're gonna nip in there, pick up some grower pellets and then go up to the allotment and uh, see if they like their house. The glowing yellow of Chapman's in the distance there. So we've rung ahead and uh, they've told us that they do have grower pellets. It's a bit more of a journey than normal, but um, they do have pretty much everything in here. So let's go. Well, it turns out Chapman's doesn't have grower pellets. Uh, so we're now actually back on the way home to the pet shop that's really near us. That turns out they do have grower pellets. So we've come all this way for nothing, but um, yeah. <laughs> Backtrack. Right, fingers crossed, pets at home come up with the goods. We're getting an, a new water feeder actually for the girls because the one we've got is absolutely massive and these girly whirlies are teeny tiny. So, um, and also mum absolutely hates the old water feeder we've got. She calls it a spaceship. <laughs> and they do have grow pellets. Woohoo! Finally, let's get those girlies up to the allotment. Sorry, girlies. <laughs> right, girls, this is your new home. This is Berta. Berta, girly whirlies. Girly Whirly's Berta, lovely. Now, let's introduce you to your new house. Are you right, Whirlies? Beautiful. It's a bit scary, isn't it? It's a bit scary, girls. Yeah. First thing we're gonna do is replace the water feeder. So I'm just gonna rest it on this stone so that it stays totally flat. It will sit on there quite nicely. The, this is the monstrosity that mum hates. It's absolutely massive. Look at the difference in size. Like, <laughs> we might go back to this one when they get a bit bigger, but uh, yeah, it's hideous. Absolutely hideous. Okay, we are just going to uh, fill up the food. So we've got water and food. And then it's time, then it's time. Mm -hmm.
these are the three new girlies on plot 37. Hey, whirly, 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 whirlies. They are so beautiful and so tiny. So we've got one millfleur, which is the speckledy one. We have one lavender, which is the white one. She looks very white here, but she's actually got a gray head. Like she goes from quite a dark gray around the top of her head down to a white bum. And then we've got this lovely girl who is like a, a gray color, like quite a dark gray color with a ginger head. They are beautiful. Okay, I've just filmed the plot tour. So that will be out on Thursday. Um, oh, that'll already be out by the time this is out. So I don't know why I'm telling you it's out on Thursday. It's already happened, but still. Um, the girls are settling in really sweet. They don't look unhappy or um, distressed in any way. They're just kind of making nice little chicken noises and rummaging around. We're going to put them away manually this evening. So normally we would just leave them to go to bed on their own in their chicken house. But obviously, I don't really know what setup they've had, where they've been before, and I don't know if that's something that they're going to be able to do straight off. Sorry, there was an aeroplane. What was I saying? Girly Wally's going to bed. So we don't really know what their setup was like, where they came from. So we're going to put them to bed manually to start with, which means coming up here every morning really early to let them out. And every evening, just as they want to go to bed, we actually manually put them inside their house, close the door, and then let them out in the morning like later on and when they've got used to it like they'll just put themselves in there whenever they want to if it's raining they tend to spend all day in there anyway or our old girlies did anyway um but just to begin with we're going to need to kind of train them up obviously so it is sorry the uh, this airplane's like crazy at the moment there was none a minute ago but now obviously i've turned the camera on so it's all airplanes <laughs> the sky is full anyway uh yeah so the girls we're going to put them to bed fairly shortly it's about half past five at the moment and we've done masses of driving today so uh pretty knackered uh we're going to put them to bed i'm going to do a bit of watering in the polytunnel and then we will be back here first thing tomorrow to let them out and um yeah so i better go and do some watering and then uh see you tomorrow morning oh yeah names so currently no names we do not have any idea on names as yet at the moment they are just gorgeous girly whirlies of joy and when they get proper names uh we'll move on from that anyway yeah watering girls to bed go and have a glass of wine morning it's pretty early it is about seven o'clock ish gray skies it's quite fresh this morning actually and um we're here to get the girlies up breakfast call So how we manage the chickens, like in general, obviously not these girls because they're little bubbers, but normally um, we have a tin that we shake, which is this one. Because they, um, we let them out and they just stroll around the allotment, we need to have some kind of way to just signal that they'll come straight back in because if we see a danger or it's time to go home or anything, we need to know that we can get them straight back in here. So it's gonna be a long time before these girls are just allowed to wander around without any kind of, kind of fencing from us in this little area here. But training begins today. So in here I've got corn, 
they're too young really to eat the corn they're on like grower pellets which are like the little tiny pellets but normally what's in this tin is a mixture of corn and dried mealworms but they can eat mealworms now so i'm going to keep shaking this tin because it's the sound of the corn really that makes it so good so i want them to associate that sound with the mealworms so i'm going to do like a bit of a double and um see if we can get them eventually to come running when i shake the tin what do you think girls you think that's an option good morning i have my coffee it's gray again but it's not raining which is a bit of a turn up for the books so it is what day is it today it is friday and uh just a bit of an update on the girlies uh, they took themselves to bed last night which was really quite exciting so you know um the first night we like put them into their bed by bed i mean like the little house that's within there the pink roof house we put them in there and locked them up and then got up here really early the next morning to open it up and like let them out for the day with our previous chickens it took a bit sorry i keep staring at them because uh they're gorgeous um yeah so with our previous chickens it took them a bit of time to work out um the ladder and all that kind of stuff these girls no problems whatsoever yeah so last night we left them up here at about uh, five o'clock ish and just left obviously all the doors open to their little pink house and uh went to the pub and um, had a couple of pints and then just as it was starting to get dusk so not dark but like just when you feel the light starts fading uh, mum popped back up just to check that they'd gone inside and they had they'd tucked themselves away uh, for bedtime which is a huge thing because it means that we don't have to come up here every morning to let them out and every evening to get them back into their house so they are doing an amazing job they've only been here a couple of days and they've got bedtime sorted out <laughs> Um, yeah, they look really happy. They're just like pootling around a bit. The ladder going into their house was causing quite a lot of excitement this morning. Sorry, it's pretty noisy here today. Uh, we've got the aeroplanes going on. There is a chat with a leaf blower over there. You know, they're playing cricket just on the other side. Well, not playing cricket. They are in the nets practicing bowling just over there. So there's a lot of ho oh! shouting and things like that. There's one. <laughs> But yeah, so the girls are doing really well. They are looking really settled and quite comfortable. We tried them on some mealy worms. So they're on the grower pellets. Like, you know, we tried to find the grower pellets. They're eating them no problem. They're drinking. They found their water feeder because we didn't know what their setup was, where we got them from in terms of like, what are they used to drinking out of and stuff. It's always a bit of a worry. Like if they don't recognize where they're supposed to be getting their water from and stuff, because those, uh, those kind of bucket things where you've just got the little trough they can be a bit confusing uh, when we first got them Tracy our old chicken took her ages to understand that that's where the water was <laughs> but these girls no problems whatsoever they are looking fantastic uh, so basically at the moment the name of the game is just to spend as much time up here with them as possible uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of editing and bits and pieces up here normally I do it in the shed but I think I'm going to set up camp in the chicken house and just sit there um, to get them used to us um, what else have we got to do today so it is Friday like I said and I'm going down to Johanna's this afternoon so I'm up here to do a bit of chicken fussing and a bit of picking I think there's some tomatoes that are all set to go in the poly tunnel so I'm going to break into that and pick some tomatoes which is quite exciting loads of courgettes to pick unsurprisingly loads of beans to pick as well so I'm going to do a bit of a bean picking fest I've got some leftover prawns at home so I'm going to pick just as we're leaving so I'll do it last thing I'm just going to pick a couple of the male courgette flowers and stuff them and have them for lunch nice and then I'll be off I'm stopping off somewhere on my way down to Johanna's because um, she's at work today so I'm going to go meet her at work and I have never been to where she hasn't been working there very long and I haven't been there before so so it's going to be new for you and for me it is plant related I'll just tell you that I'm not just like taking you into um, an office block <laughs> mm. right I better get on with something I think this is uh, pretty much cold because I've been chatting too much rather than drinking it and uh, first thing is polytunnel then beans 
God, I can't tell you how long I've been waiting to be able to actually pick a decent number of tomatoes. I mean, there was only one large one in there, but I'm happy with that. I'm not complaining. <laughs> it has been a long time coming, considering this is like the middle of August. Well, actually nearing the end of August. And that's the first kind of proper basket of tomatoes. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, on to the beans. So these are the Violetta, which are the purple beans. Um... Once again, doing a beautiful job of showing how easy they are to pick on an arch. <laughs> I'll put a link to the video where I talk uh, constantly about how good growing beans up arches are, just above. These ones are the cobra beans, which are, so all three of these are French beans. These ones are green and they're sort of very, very smooth and delicious. And on the other side here, these are the nudeca beans, which are bright yellow. And interestingly, they're just a bit textured, like they're quite bobbly you know if you leave um french beans on the vine too long you start being able to see the seeds through them and they become kind of corrugated almost these guys kind of grow like that from the beginning and they're not tough at all it's all an illusion there we go you see do you see what i mean about them being a bit sort of undulating and look at the color of these guys they're just gorgeous right let's add them to the tomatoes and uh I'll go and have a word with the chickens and then I think it's probably time to head off. Look at that. Not a bad harvest. Hey girls. Right, I am off now. I am heading down south <laughs> and I'm getting the bus as well. So wish me luck. Seriously, wish me luck.
Look at this. Can't escape the bindweed. It's heading up into the tree as well. <laughs> ah. Right, well, this is alarming. So this is a normal bus, you know, like the kind of bus that you push the bell on to get off rather than a coach or anything. And look, we're on the motorway. I have never been on a bus on a motorway before. This is incredibly exciting. <laughs> I'm also the only person on the bus, so I wouldn't know if he's going the right way or not. But I do believe my stop is coming up. There it is. It's surrounded by stinging nettles, that's what we want. <laughs> that is magic. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Well, that's a bit handy. I've like just got off the bus and. Uh, I can see Luffs from here, which is uh, quite good actually. I never really trust it when you get in a bus, it's never gonna sh actually like drop you where it's gonna drop you, or I miss the stop, which is more to the point, it's not normally the bus's fault, it's normally my fault, but uh, okay. Ripley's Nursery, Luffs and Sons, it's right opposite me. Very suspicious DHL driver giving me a right look. I've never been here before, so uh, I don't really know where to look, but I'm looking for Johanna. I can see cactuses. She has been spotted. <gasps> go away, go away. <laughs> Moving big bushes around. It's not raining yet. It's not raining. And you found her. Well, this is all rather lovely, isn't it? So this is Ripley Nurseries or a Luff and Sons. I'm not entirely sure, it seems to have two names. But anyway, this is where Johanna's working. Isn't it lovely? I used to work in a garden centre and I spent all of my wages on plants basically. So I'm glad I'm not working here. But yeah, it looks gorgeous. A bit of everything. And it's really open. Where I used to work, we had an awful lot of plane trees around so it was really enclosed. This is all big sky. Yes, very nice. So it's massive, like way bigger than I was expecting. And I can tell you what they're not sure of is a garden building. It's like a little metropolis. And there's a load of echinacea over there. So I've just been looking at buying some echinacea uh, because I can't grow it at home for love nor money, but it seems to do really well up at the allotment. So that patch alongside the pond, I was gonna put a load of echinacea in there and I can see some in the distance. Let's go. Yeah, so I absolutely love echinacea, but like I say, I have a really hard time growing it in my back garden. So I'm gonna give it a go up the allotment because it seems to be growing really well everywhere else up there. It's also called the purple cone flower, I think. And uh, it's from North America originally. It's one of those plants that you often find the pills like echinacea pills in pharmacies and whatnot. Uh, that's supposed to cure the cold and flu and all that kind of stuff. I'm not entirely convinced about that, but it is supposed to have a really, really beneficial effect on your immune system. So yeah, what a lovely plant. And on top of that, it just looks gorgeous. I mean, look at this chap, Whew. absolutely stunning. Okay, I'm gonna try and uh, walk and talk at the same time. If you see me go down, you know I've fallen over. So yeah, they've pretty much got absolutely everything here, which is really nice. And I'm, I was really determined when I arrived. I was thinking, well, I'm not going to go home with anything. Like, I was thinking I was strong enough to go to a garden centre and not buy something. But I can feel my conviction is kind of wavering a bit, particularly the echinacea. But also, there's a farm shop, which I'm just going to take you in now because uh, it looks really good. Johanna is moving a load of Portuguese laurels around so I'm just leaving her to it for the time being so I nearly went then <laughs> and uh, let's go around the corner and have a look at the farm shop so it says farm shop but this isn't a farm and normally a farm shop is attached to a farm so we'll see what's inside well I'm having a good look around inside and basically it seems they've got everything everything you could ever want in here they have all of this bread flour they've got jams and pickles galore, fresh veg, 
I mean, I know a farm shop's meant to be locally sourced. I don't think there's a Ripley coconut farm or melons. In terms of the local shop, this has got everything. And they do have some of their own bits and pieces in here. Look, cranberry sauce, Ripley nurseries. They are seriously not short of a jam. <laughs> there's all of these uh, pickles and chutneys and jams and everything. If you needed to hole up somewhere because of some disaster, like this is where you want to be. I mean, look at this even, look at this. Vegemite, Vegemite. Mum being Australian, I grew up with Vegemite and it's really, really difficult to find. And this little shop's got it. That's nuts. Okay, but I'm gonna be very restrained and I'm just gonna buy some of this potting shed pickle because how can I not? I've just spotted the herbs, right? And there is a basil that I have never seen before. This doesn't happen very often. I mean, have a look at this. I, it's variegated. I've seen variegated basil before, no problem. It's more the growth habit of this. Look, it's really like upright. It's called basil pesto, which is a bit of a questionable name choice, but it's very beautiful. And look at those dark stems. I think that's a winner. I'm just waiting for Johanna to finish up for the day. So I'm gonna have a nose in the shop while I do. Bit of everything, loads of bird feeders and bird seed, and of course, everyone comes to the garden center to buy a cat handbag. One thing they really don't have a lot of here is any kind of vegetable seedlings. They've got these few left and I do know it's late in the season so there's not a great deal around. Look, we've got Pablo beetroot and a bit of carrot, but really there's loads of stuff that could be going in now ready for winter and there just isn't much here. But talking of buying, yep, I've got myself a cart. Wish me luck, chaps. get one of these because I love it. I really fancy that white one but we've got so many white daisy shaped flowers around the pond I don't think it's necessary <sighs> be strong Jesse walk away walk away <laughs> very good because anyway I don't drive and Johanna has given me her car keys to get into the car to get the things that I said I wasn't going to buy that I have bought into the car and <laughs> it's taken me about 10 tries to get the driver's door open and now I've got the passenger door open which is good but there's a button on there that says boot like that clearly like that symbol looks like it's going to open the boot doesn't it it won't <laughs> I've been standing here clicking it for about five minutes I can't get anywhere with it, so I'm just gonna put all the things on the back seat. <laughs> I can't even get the seat to move back to let me in to put the back seat. <laughs> I'm standing on my own in a field with my bum stuck out the side of the car and I cannot get it to do anything. I've pumped the seat up and down like three times. Uh, it won't move forward. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's not cooperating. <laughs> Well, I would say that was mission not successful. <laughs> I had to find help. But two more things before we go. Johanna's just finishing up. She's gonna show me some compost and also apparently something terrifying in an olive tree. 
So you know I've been really dissatisfied with the New Horizon peat-free compost that I bought earlier this year. I'm just really not happy with it. Apparently this is the stuff. This is brilliant. I'm not going to buy a bag now, but Johanna's going to give me half a bag to test out. So there's that one. And apparently also this one. So made by the same people, Melkor. This is the stuff. I'm going to give these a go. And fingers crossed we found a solution because that other stuff is terrible. And just as we're going out the door... What's this thing with the olive tree? Ooh! <laughs> That's proper scary! <laughs> You're gonna put that on there, aren't you? I certainly am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Halloween. It is now, what day is it? Sunday, I'm still at Johanna's. We did pretty much nothing yesterday because the weather was terrible, it rained all day. We went to the Devil's Punch Bowl, had a bit of a stroll around, um, which was nice and it wasn't too heavy rain, but it was pretty soggy. And uh, yeah, then we went out for dinner. <laughs> so didn't get a huge amount done yesterday, but it is Sunday now. The sun is shining and the sky is completely blue. And I have just been recording a, uh, just like a look around Johanna's garden, which is going to be Thursday's video. So I'm not going to tack it on to the end of this vlog because um, it's a video in its own right. <laughs> She's got quite a big garden. So that's what I'm doing. That's going to be Thursday's video. And uh, I'm just going to show you a bit of this blue sky. We're about to have something to eat out in the garden. Go back and see the chickens. Actually, I probably won't see the chickens this evening because it'll be quite late by the time I get back. But um, first thing tomorrow morning up to the chickens don't worry they've been looked after my mum I haven't just like abandoned them there <laughs> mum has been diligently looking after the chickens so uh yeah we're gonna have something to eat and then I will see you back in Richmond It's a Monday. Uh, God, we've done a lot of days this week, haven't we? Like I've got really used to just doing kind of two or three days in a vlog and this day we've got, we've got not all the days, but a lot of the days this week. <laughs> so a couple of things. Firstly, I've got my beautiful echinacea, which is ready to go in. I'm just about to plant that next to the pond. And the girlies are good. They're still beautiful, I can assure you. Still no like concrete idea on names. Yeah. That's probably going to be next week's vlog. I will introduce you to them properly. We haven't quite worked out their personalities yet. I remember when we got Lua and Fleur. It was really funny because it started off like Lua was this really confident. She was the golden, the Colombian buff. So like the golden one. I don't know if you remember her. But she was really, oh, can you see? Action. 
uh, yeah, she was really confident and she was the first one out of the box and she was really kind of like feisty. And it wasn't long before she was the bottom of the pecking order. <laughs> so it's a bit difficult to tell at the moment, but I mean, over the coming weeks or whatever, all of that will work out. And it's just gonna be a bit of a slow process, kind of getting to know them and training them up and uh, eventually kind of finding the right names for them really, I think. So this is gonna be a pretty quick summary because this turned out to be a long week and I've taken you all over the place. There wasn't a great deal of gardening in it, but uh, that's gonna be quite different next week because next week I've got three big jobs to do right here. I've got massive works to be doing in the shed. I say massive works, it's more like clearing, sorting. I've got some exciting things to put up in the shed. So it's gonna be quite a lot of work there, but it's all gonna be based here. I've got to do some work on the carrot bed situation. That's all gonna be sorted next week. I've got to clear quite a lot of pond weed and split some plants that are in the pond. There'll obviously be more chicken related news and things. What else have I got to do? Oh, and I've got to build a barbecue. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next week. So we're gonna be firmly placed here. Oh God. I tell you what guys, I am not dressed for style today. Look at this completely dressed for comfort but you know I hadn't realized I was going to be filming up here so you know whatever not that I dress for style very often to be perfectly honest but you know oh well needs must <laughs> so anyway I'm rambling really hope you enjoyed kind of a bit of a poodle around with me this week um I know there was not necessarily a great deal of gardening although tomato harvest finally got something which was quite exciting the garden center that johanna's working at i really enjoyed going there i hope i kind of conveyed how much i enjoyed it and i will put their facebook page in a link underneath in case you want to check them out they are in ripley um which i've since learned is not very far away from wisley so that sort of area of the world johanna lives down in hazelmere so it's kind of it was like halfway between if you sort of see what i mean so it's down there if you're around that way go and visit them but i will put the link underneath uh that farm shop by the way despite my misgivings about the term kind of farm shop that yeah basically you want anything you'll find it there <laughs> so anyway i am going to leave you um i would love to be doing a cheers but oh, i don't have anything up here my water barrel that normally has beers in it has got nothing in it I've just had a cup of coffee, so I can't even cheers you with that. And um, I tell you what, I'm gonna go and plant this echinacea. I am going to uh, potter around. I'm gonna have a chat to the chickens. I'm gonna go home and I will cheers you from home. I will cheers you from home. Okay, chaps. See you on Thursday for a tour around Johanna's garden and see you next Tuesday for, you know, more of this kind of stuff. He's a race! <laughs>